David was a man that God said is a man after his own heart. At the early days of David's life, David was the last son of Jesse. And David, in his younger age, was a shepherd. He was the one taking care of the father's sheep. And he lived to be one of the greatest leaders the world has ever seen. Because even after this world is over and Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, comes for the 1,000 years reign on earth, he will still sit on the throne of David. Do you know why? <laughs> because David lived a life of legacy. David was a unique man. David was a man full of insight. So David as a shepherd, and then the day came, Israel was at war with the Philistines, and his father sent him to take food to his brothers. On getting there, he saw what Goliath was doing, and David as a young man was ready to go on the challenge. The story is long, but it is so interesting. There are some things you realize that Levi, David's life turned into. He became a transformational leader. And after he killed Goliath, later on Saul demanded him to come to the house. He was playing music for Saul. At the time, Saul realized the song of the women went into him and he wanted to kill David. In the process of doing that, David had to run away. While he was in the bush, Certain people believed in him and gathered around him, but they were men of no substance. But David now had to transform their lives. Do you know that in the lifetime of David, he was anointed three times? The first one was when Samuel uh, was sent by God to the house of Jesse to anoint David. The second one was when the two tribes of uh, Israel anointed him to be king. You find that in 2 Samuel chapter 2, beginning from verse 1 to 4. The third one was when the entire house of Israel, the 12 tribes, now recognized him as a king and they anointed him as a king over Israel. There are things that made David a transformational leader. And I would like to give them to you Briefly, by the way, I am Dr. David Kings, the president of Enjoy Leadership Institute. You can be partner, a partner with us and we work on together. I can come around for your leadership seminar and be a blessing to your people. Now, back to the transformational traits of leaders. Three things that you will find in the life of David that made him a unique man. Number one ability to adjust. David adjusted from a shepherd to be a military man. From a military man to be a servant of Saul. From being a servant of Saul to be a man in the bush. With all, he was contented and used the opportunity to learn and rise up. That's David. He had that mentality of adjustment. If you are a leader and you are not ready to adjust sometimes, you may miss the target and miss your life and ministry. David was always ready to adjust. <laughs> he, when he was with the poor, he wasn't raising himself to look as a man that is so great. He brought down himself to that level so that they can understand. It. In a common principle of pedagogy, Pedagogy is the principles of teaching. It is commonly said <laughs> this, that the students have not been able to learn until there is a change in their life. And one of the other principles is that anytime you are teaching, when you come to a particular group of people, start with what they know. Don't start with what they don't know. Start with what they know before you take them to the unknown. So that was exactly with David. He was able to adjust and come up as a leader. When he became a leader, he was also adjusted. Do you know that David, his pastor was Nathan, and uh, David was the choir master in the church. David was the president in chief. He was the military general. I mean, the president and commander in chief of the Israeli army. Yet, 
David still adjusted to be a choir master. There are so many people I know that the moment they are raised up, they feel they are too big, they cannot be engaged in one thing or the other. No, that was not David. David was a man that had that mentality of adjustment. Number two thing that transformational leaders should be able to learn is appreciate. They have that ability to appreciate. They don't look down on any form of achievement. They are always grateful unto God. Have you ever wondered who wrote the book of Psalms? 75% of it was David. And they were so suppressed. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with praise. I will say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I am so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I am so glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. That's the song of David. He was always appreciative to God. In Psalm 100 verse 4 he said, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. David, a man that was full of appreciation. In Psalm, for example, 67 verse 5 to 7 he says, Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people Praise thee. What will happen? So shall the earth yield her increase. And our God, even our God, shall bless us. He was a man that was always appreciative. He never looked down at those men that fought for him. Do you remember one time when David was in the bush? He sent his commander. He said, I am thirsty. He just wanted to test them. He said, I'm thirsty. Who will go into the camp of the enemy and get us water to drink? And three men said, Sir, we are going and lay down our life and get you water. They went right where the enemy's armies were. They fetched water and brought it to David. You know what? David looked at them and said, Thank you. But he said, I can't drink this water. Because this water is like blood. You laid down your life for me. Now also, I will lay down my life for you. He was appreciative of the sacrifice of people. So a great transformational leader is a man that appreciates. He appreciates. Lastly, he acquires. Three things. A great transformational leader is a leader that adjusts. He's a leader that appreciates. He's a leader that acquires. He has a goal and a target on what to reach and how to acquire it. He walks with his hands. He's not a lazy man. No lazy man is permitted to eat. <laughs> That's why the Bible says, for instance, he that does not walk must not eat. So you are not permitted to eat if you are not a worker. <laughs> Be a covenant worker. Work is not punishment. Work is not a lord. Work is not a discipline. No, work is a responsibility. Be a covenant worker. The first thing God gave Adam was work. He said, Adam, I put you here in the garden of Eden. So you need to dress the garden and then enjoy the fruits thereof. So you are not created to be a lazy man. Don't be lazy. Be a covenant worker. Be a creative worker. Be a diligent worker. Be a sympathetic and enthusiastic worker. Be a passionate worker. Anyone that will ever want to succeed in life must learn this. You must have a target and be sure and ready to acquire them. I believe that you desire to be great and be a man of significance. You are blessed of God. Join us and continue with us in this great series as we have just ended the seventh series on transformational leadership. Never you forget, I am 
Dr. David Kings, the president of Enjoy Leadership Institute. Always enjoy, no frustration. Always enjoy. God bless you. See you next time. And let's go on in the journey of learning so that we become what God has destined us to be. You are favored of God.